Hey guys, I thought I'd do a quick video overview of my Frey CC that I ordered from Frey back in January during the U.S. Group Buy Promotion. Um, I would recommend if you're looking for a Frey bike to not do one of the promotions because it does take a long time to get your bike. I think the last promotion they had, uh, it was free shipping, but you'd wait six months for your bike, and it just is too long to wait for a bike um, if you do the standard sea shipping it's only five hundred dollars you'll get your bike faster and you'll be out enjoying it much sooner than otherwise also i'd highly recommend checking out the forums over at electricbikereview.com there's some great forums some great knowledgeable people um, and i've posted a few thoughts on my bike there if you want to check out the fray forum there's a thread on the fray cc that i created to just kind of summarize my thoughts along the way. So if you're interested in buying this bike, uh, want some more thoughts on it, more in-depth detail than I've provided here, feel free to check that out. I paid roughly $3,500 for the bike. That was with the discounted shipping. Um, it was around $3,200 with the options that I added and shipping was 300. So if you just bought it without a promotion, it would be around 3500 to 3700 depending on what options you add. I got it in this red color. It's I'd probably describe it as candy apple red. It's just a gorgeous color. I originally ordered it in uh, matte black and as you can see the bike is is pretty much red and black and in all black and especially in the matte color it just did not have any pop. I like this red because it just gives the bike a much more premium look to it. There's also a blue color I've seen on Frey's website. I particularly didn't like it, but everybody's different in terms of color. Um, but this red and the bike itself is just gorgeous. I get compliments everywhere I go. Um, not just from younger people, but uh, there was, I'd say she was a 90 year old woman coming out of the store the other day and she looked at my bike and said, that is absolutely gorgeous. So it really is a nice looking bike. I'd highly uh, recommend it not only from the looks but it just rides so nice um, on the road it's super stable at speed it is a mid step or kind of a high mid step but you don't really feel a lot of frame flex the uh, it does have full suspension although the rear rack is not sprung meaning that uh, it's it's attached to the suspension so when you add weight on that rear rack it is going to you know mess with the suspension a little bit it's just going to be um, more weighty and uh, have a little bit more inertia in terms of how it performs but it, it it does well enough i've carried 30 pounds of grocery on the back and um, it, it did fine it's still a cushy ride but it's not going to be as stable or smooth as when it's not loaded down with weight i'll talk a little bit about some of the options i added to the bike so i went with the uh, rear rack and mud guards. Um, the front mud guards here I actually replaced because I didn't like the mud guards that came with it. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. I also got these ergonomic grips which weren't any extra cost upgrade. I really like them. It just makes it easy, uh, your wrist less tired when you're riding um, to rest on them. I'd recommend those. The front light also came with the rear light. Again, all these options were pretty cheap, um, so I'm not expecting a you know, superb quality or anything like that. It's pretty basic light. It's got kind of three different lights, so you can point them in different directions. It's not particularly bright. One thing that I don't like about it is if you haven't had it on for a while, when you turn on the lights, it doesn't come on. I'm gonna, let me turn on the bike real quick here and turn on the lights. Okay, so the lights are on, but it's not on, so... You kind of have to press this button to turn them on and this thing's kind of finicky too. It's not cycling these other lights here. I won't bother with that. So may eventually replace that. Um, the nice thing is that the wire is already here. It's already routed. I'm not sure how this bike comes without a light, but um, you know, if you just want to put a different light, at least you just pull it out and hook it up to a different light. Um, in terms of other options that I added, I got the... Uh, this little chain catcher here and which wasn't any significant cost. I also got the um, gear sensor which will cut power as you're shifting to kind of 
preserve your drivetrain. I have other bikes without the gear sensor. I'm I'm used to shifting, you know, easing up on the pedals when I shift. So um, it's not necessary, but it is kind of nice to have. Um, I also got a couple extra derailleur hangers. That's these little things right here. They're just kind of inexpensive parts so that if your derailleur gets bent, this bends, bends and you just have to replace it. It wasn't significant cost. I also added an extra chain because I know my chain's going to wear out eventually. So I've got that as well. And again, all those options were something like... Uh, under $200, so pretty pretty nominal. I also ordered a programming cable, which didn't come, um, which I wanted to use to tune the motor a little bit. One thing I don't particularly care for on the ultra motor is that the torque sensing is a little bit unrefined. I was hoping to get the programming cable to get that a little bit more refined, but it didn't come with it. But the, the, the bike is super powerful. I generally ride in passenger assist one, to two most of the time um, and that's like equivalent to um, medium to high on some of my uh, other bikes which have a 250 watt Eurospec motor so it's plenty powerful when I'm going uphill as you can see we're up there's a lake down there in the background we're up like 700 feet above the lake so I have a pretty significant hill to come up to at the end of my ride and um, if I'm really tired and I have enough battery I can just put it in in a lower gear and hit the throttle and I can go up the hill at you know 10 to 15 miles per hour so it's nice to have that that option the uh, bike does consume a lot of battery though if you use the power um, so just be prepared I kind of my only regret is I wish I had ordered an extra battery I didn't think I'd need it but um, I sometimes have a little bit of range anxiety so that's something I would suggest throwing in if you're considering this bike Okay, so in terms of this rear light, rear light, I like it. You know, it's not particularly bright or anything, but the nice thing is when you uh, I'm gonna click the brakes here, off the lights, be more pronounced. It's just kind of nice that it automatically um, kind of integrates with the brakes, even if you don't have the lights turned on. This rack is fine. It's pretty solid. I've carried 30 pounds of groceries on one side. Uh, wasn't unstable, although it did kind of the suspension got weighed down a little bit so it wasn't that good um wasn't as smooth of ride i have scraped up this uh, it's not gonna want to focus here scraped up the rack just slightly here the paint chipped off from where my grocery pannier kind of got too close to that i've put these little uh, electrical tape knobs in here to prevent my pannier from sliding this way as it didn't really want a lot of pedal strike um while I'm riding with the pannier, or pannier, or however, however you pronounce it. Okay, in terms of the rear fender, um, it works well enough. It's plastic. You can see it wobbles a little bit, but for the most part, it's it's kind of screwed into this rack, so it's pretty stable. I don't get a lot of chatter with it. In contrast, however, this front fender, which I've replaced, um, here's the new front fender. I just got this from somebody locally that was selling this. Uh, it's a Planet Bike. Uh, it's a 29 inch by 65 millimeter um, aluminum fender. And it's, you can see it's kind of got two skewers here to make it more stable in terms of the attachment. Um, I kind of rigged some sort of. There was, I didn't know how to screw this in, so I just kind of rigged an old Dell adapter is kind of like this bungee thing and it holds it on really nice but uh this is way more stable at least i think it will be i haven't really ridden since i put it on last night but the fender that came with it is just pretty much worthless i'll show it to you in a sec so here's the plastic fender that came with the bike you can see it bends wobbles and these skewers are really short and this one already popped off just while i've had it off the bike this one, actually, um, I stripped the screw, original screw, so I kind of had to use a, my own improvisation, improvisation. But it didn't matter. This thing just chattered too much. And it doesn't really have a lot of coverage either. So I really like these Planet Bike Cascadia ALX fenders. Um, they're not as wide. I think that these are 70 millimeters and these are 65. So. I would probably suggest if you're looking at other fenders, check out the SKS Blue Mel's 75. That's what Watt Wagons puts on their bike. The bike comes with um, 
2.4 inch tires, 27 and a half. Um, and so you really kind of need a wider fender, but I'm hopefully these are going to work out for me. And they only cost me 40 bucks. I think they retail for something like 70. Uh, they're nice fenders though. Okay, the other thing I'm going to point out if you end up using those fenders is the they normally kind of attach here. They have long skewers, so these are the kind of the attachments that came with the fray fenders. So I just tapped into that and I just kind of pushed out the skewers and then used a bolt cutter to cut them off to make them look clean. But they're super stable. I don't think they're going to rattle like my, my other fenders did, so I think I'll be happier with them. Um, so one thing I would suggest to Frey is ditch these plastic fenders that probably cost them about 10 bucks. I mean, they're an add-on, so at least offer customers something a little bit more competent if they want fenders like the SKS Blue Mills 75. I think they retail for 75 bucks, but they probably are only like under $40 um, uh, wholesale. Okay, the other thing in terms of the um, bike that I would suggest Frey change is the seat post. This is actually a replacement seat post that I added. I'm six foot and I got the seat about as high as the handlebars. It's a little bit higher, so it's a nice neutral ride. But uh, this is a 350 millimeter post that I pulled off a different bike and the one that comes with it is only 300. Um, they claim that the, you know, the bike works for people up to 6'3", but obviously the seat post isn't going to work, so um, include a bigger seat post it would be my suggestion there, or a taller seat post to provide more flexibility for taller riders. Okay, again, this, this red color is absolutely gorgeous. The uh, one thing I'll point out, though, is it tends to chip pretty easily. Um, like the other day, this bike kind of fell off a little bit and dinged the wall, and the paint chipped right there. Um, also, it kind of came chip down here by the motor so I would suggest Frey provide some touch-up paint with the bike maybe I don't know how good that would look or whether it would blend in okay but uh, um, it just kind of be nice uh, nice something nice to have um, I guess I can find some touch-up paint or something see how it works out or just not worry about it the bikes gonna get scratched anyway the other thing in terms of the seat um, I found it pretty pretty cushy but I'm not sure it's going to work for me long term. I still haven't found a seat for any of my bikes that really likes my butt. But um, this one initially felt pretty good, but um, I think it might be a little bit too squishy for me. But anyway, that's a quick overview of my Frey CC. For the most part, I really like this bike. Uh, no bike is perfect. Um, I've got a few minor, you know, gripes here and there, but. Uh, you know, it's it's overall, it's a really nice bike for the money, and I would definitely recommend it if you are looking for a comfortable, uh, powerful bike. It is a bit heavy. It weighs in with rack around 73 pounds, so just be prepared for that. It's not going to be, I don't, you know, they call it a cross-country bike. I'm not so sure. I think it, I think they originally the CC standard for city commuter, which makes more sense to me. Um, you could certainly take it off-road and it'd be capable, but um, I'm not sure it's the best choice if you're looking for something, say, you know, to ride, uh, you know, single track or something like that. It's obviously it's not going to be the bike. Uh, they have other models for that. But overall, I really like the bike for the most part and um, hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, feel free to pop in over at uh, electricbikereview.com in the Frey Forum or just post your comments below.